All right, continuing with part two of this video series entitled Head Wounds, Heal Injuries. And I'm going to explain later on in this video why I called it that, okay? But now I want to focus our attention to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Now in the last video, I focused on Jacob and how he would play the snake or the serpent. And I examined some of the wickedness that would come out of Yasharel. And it is written and contained within the coded words and parables in this verse here that would unfold throughout the rest of the Bible. And I know most people don't like to hear that. They're like, oh, that's not. Well, if you read it carefully, you'll see that there are verses in Scripture that indicate that Two-thirds of Yasharel and some of the tribes, or one of the tribes, would bring forth the anti-Mashiach. Alright, so in this video I want to focus on Esau and his role and part in the wickedness we see in the world today. His is a little more easy to decipher than Yasharel's. All right, so let's do that. All right, Genesis 3.15 says that the Most High would put enmity between thee, the serpent, and the woman. Again, the woman in Scripture is also symbolically referencing the body of Mashiach, the body being Yasharel, the head being Savior. And between the seed of the serpent, the literal seed, and the spiritual seed, the apostates that he has gathered on his side to work for him. That is his seed. And he has a literal seed as well. All right. So there would be enmity between the serpent's seed and her, the woman's seed. The woman again is Yasharel. All right. And it says here that it, not he or she, but it says it, what could it mean? Could it be the events that transpired at Calvary? Or could it be a future event that has yet to happen besides what happened at Calvary? Maybe I'm right in both. Maybe I'm not. We'll see. All right, and then it says that it, whatever this it is, would bruise thy head. It's not saying it will bruise the snake's head. It's not saying it would bruise the woman's head. Well, it's not putting it out there, you know, where it's obvious. It's either one or the other. It could be both, right? And thou, you, shall bruise his heel. Now, could this be have a two-way meaning here? Meaning it... What happened at Calvary would bruise the head of the woman, the woman again being Yasharel, who is the head, Mashiach. Did he not receive a bruise? Did not the head of the woman receive a bruise in Calvary? He died, right? So he was cut off for a while. We know he's coming back again. And then it says, and you... It could also mean the serpent, right? You shall bruise the seal, but we're sticking to the woman here being the one that received the head wound, meaning the head of the woman. The head is Mashiach. The body is a woman who is Yasharel. Yasharel's head received a bruised by the enemy at Calvary. And then it says that you, the woman, or Yasharel, would bruise the enemy's heel. You're saying, wait a minute, I never looked at it like that. Yeah, again, key words being it. It's not saying who shall bruise thy head, your head. Who's this talking about, you know? There's a semicolon indicating this is a separate thought. Okay, moving on from what we just read. And this is a separate thought. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So the woman would bruise 
the serpent's heel. What is the heel? Remember, Esau came out first and his heel was being held by Jacob's. So Esau is the heel. And in this case, it's saying the heel of the serpent. So letting you know that the serpent's heel are Edomites. Follow me now. I mean, follow me. Here you have Nebuchadnezzar's statue, right? Look at the legs. Look at the feet. Look at the heels. They're made of iron. If you know scripture, you'll see that this is the Edomite Empire, right? And you see the fireball coming over here. About to smash the feet of this statue. The fireball is Mashiach. You see the fireball on the right hand side. Traveling at the speed of light. Or just about. And he's getting ready to smash the heel of this statue. Remember, the feet are mixed iron and clay. Meaning there's a weak spot, a chink in this armor. So that is where Mashiach is going to strike. Right? So let's go back again. This verse is very dimensional. There's a lot of meaning here. Back and forth. So in, again, it's saying that it, what happened at Calvary, would bruise our head, Mashiach. But we would bruise the enemy's heel, who are the Edomites, this final empire, the wicked part of Edom, right? You know? So, you see how this verse right here is prophesying? All these kingdoms are the enemy's kingdoms. And the heel is letting you know that that will be the last part of his kingdom, the Roman Empire, the Edomites. And that's where Mashiach is going to come in the near future and destroy, take down the heel, meaning the Roman Empire. And also you can read that part, the second part of this verse, where it says it, meaning the events that happened at Calvary were Bruce, the head of the serpent, spiritually speaking. That would kind of give him a crippling head wound, if not a crushing wound, where it takes him completely out, right? Kind of like when you're, you know, fighting, and you hit somebody, you're just jabbing him, then you drop that right hand. You're jabbing him, jabbing him, you're just busting him up, but you haven't delivered the, the right hand, the knockout punch, right? So the, the snake definitely got a, got a head bruise at Calvary. Mashiach got bruised as well our head so to you see you see the duality in the verse and it's saying that the snake would bruise Mashiach's heel because when he delivers that fatal blow which has yet to happen but that's a, for another video in Romans it says that soon Paul says that Mashiach will crush Satan under his feet meaning he hasn't delivered the deadly blow yet so when he does the enemy will at best just bruise his heel so you see it's two things going on over here so moving on Genesis 25 26 Esau came out first and then his brother came out and took hold of Esau's heel again Esau is the heel letting you know here he represents the heel okay he's the serpent's heel in the statue of Nebuchadnezzar the Roman Empire one of Satan's kingdoms his army men right all right see and his name was called Jacob again Jacob in the sense representing Mashiach right he will come through Jacob so Esau was 
hammering at our head, did he not? Who killed Christ? The Romans, Edom, right? So they wounded our head. Now let's go all the way back to Genesis, and here it is. The events at Calvary indeed bruised our head, right? Who bruised our head? Esau's people, right? Satan through Esau's people. But we will bruise, we'll get him back, we'll get Edom back, bruise his heel. Who's his Satan's heel? Go back to the Nebuchadnezzar statue. There it is, the heels, Roman Empire, the feet of iron and clay, the, the, the feet are weak, again, there's a weak spot in their armor, and that's where Mashiach is going to strike. Going to get them back. So yeah, Esau is Satan's heel. Well, in a spiritual sense, yes. But also, that's the Esau is a heel that the enemy is using and would use to wound our Mashiach. Remember, the Romans killed him. Okay, so they killed him, killed the body, but not they couldn't they can't get rid of him, right? So so his name was called Jacob. And now yeah, Esau's people are the ones causing the problems in this case. All right, so I just wanted to share that and show you how it's these things are very layered with all types of meanings twofold meanings the duality of these verses is very dynamic so yeah it's i mean it's not hard to see that this was prophesying about the events at Calvary and other places as well and that Jacob would also Go astray two thirds. Think of the tribe of Dan, serpent creeping in. So, yeah, it's just about which side are you on? Which who who do you want to serve? Two thirds made a covenant with hell and death, and there's some Edomites like Job. Well, I wouldn't say he's an Edomite, but I would say he converted. He's Yasharel now, and it's just what side you choose that determines. Where you'll end up, whose side you're on. I mean, if you're predestined for damnation, there's nothing you could do about it. If you're called, then you better overcome. If you're the elect, well then, just make sure you're doing your job. It says here that, yeah, seed of the woman, seed of the serpent, both of them bruising each other in their heads, Meaning the head, meaning being Satan, the head also being Mashiach. One will get a bruise in the heel. Satan's kingdom, the Roman Empire, would be crushed. You take away their legs, they got nothing to walk on, right? They can't go anywhere. So also Mashiach will suffer, I guess, in a sense, will suffer a heel uh heel wound, nothing serious, when he delivers that final blow, that fatal blow that he has yet to deliver. So he's saving his right hand. He's just jabbing the snake in his little reprobate forehead until he decides to land that right hand, bang, and gets him all dizzy, wobbly, and he sends him on retreat for a thousand years. Alright, so I just wanted to share that and I'll have more on this in the near future. For now, you tell me what you think. Do you see any other connections? Because, I mean, this pretty much unfolds everything that would transpire, you know, for the rest of uh, the Bible, you know. And I believe in Esdras. I think Mashiach tells Esdras, look nothing, don't look at nothing else, nothing more between the, the heel and the hand of Ezra, meaning... There's there's uh, the story of Esau and Jacob there, and also going back to Genesis 3.15. So, yeah, that's all I got for this video. I don't want to make it too long and ramble for too long. So, yeah, soak it in and tell me what you think. Until next time, shalom. 
Uh, my bad, y'all. I forgot to explain the reason for the title of this video series, Head Wounds, Heal Injuries. The reason I titled it that is because there's a twofold meaning in that verse of Genesis 3.15 where it says that it shall bruise thy head. So there's the head wound and then it says you shall bruise his heel. There's the heel injury, but it doesn't say who exactly would do the head wounding or heel wounding. But we know that Mashiach would be the one doing the fatal wounding, right? But there's a duality in that verse, again, indicating that both leaders, Mashiach and Satan, will receive a wound or a bruise. I wouldn't want to say wound because wound is usually like a, a huge blow but both of them would receive a bruise and at the end when it's all said and done one would receive a fatal wound a fatal blow so that's why I called it that and also it's a play on words meaning delivering a head wound to your enemy would heal, get it, heal, play on words, would heal the injuries that he is causing you. So in order to stop your enemy from injuring you constantly, you give him a fatal blow. And in this case, a foot is used to stomp on your enemy. And even though you got to stomp hard, you might bruise your foot, but you put him off for good. And that's the reason for the title of the video.